scared. I'm like, there's a non-viable pregnancy in me. There's something that you're not telling me that I really, really need to know. How would you describe Brittany Watts before all of this happened? No one knew my name. <laughs> I was quiet most of the time, just minding my own business. I had a mother who um, had a delivery at home and came in without the baby. This is not a happy holiday story. It's difficult, it's sad, but it should be heard. It's involving this woman right up here. Her name is Brittany Watts. She's being charged with abusing a corpse, and that's why this story is so complicated. So why do you think they were quick to charge you? Because of my skin color, honestly and because there are no laws behind what you are to do in this situation. The nurse comes in and she's rubbing my back and uh, talking to me and saying everything's gonna be okay. Little do I know, the nurse that was comforting me and saying that everything was gonna be okay was the one who called the police. You said you didn't want to look and that you did not want the baby. Do you remember saying that? I said I did not want to look. I have never said I, I didn't want my baby. I would have never said something like that. It just makes me angry that somebody would put those type of words in my mouth to make me seem so callous and so, so hateful. How would you describe the Brittany Watts today? Motivated, because now that the charges have been dropped, I'm ready to get to work, making sure that the laws are changed and people are educated on what to do for something that happens all the time. And, you know, as the old saying goes, history repeats itself. I don't want it to happen in this case. Brittany's water broke. She went to her doctor. She went to the hospital and was sent away multiple times from the hospital. And at the time of her miscarriage, abortion was legal in Ohio through 21 weeks and six days of pregnancy. And coincidentally, that is exactly how far along she was when she presented to the hospital and she sat for eight hours without receiving any care. It turned out the delay was because hospital officials were deliberating over the legalities. It was the fear of, is this going to constitute an abortion and are we able to do that? Watts had been admitted to the Catholic hospital twice. It is important to note that this was a Catholic hospital. Catholic hospitals are not notorious for denying care for miscarriages and refusing to give abortion care, even when it is legal in the state. This other detail that came out is also very important because when pregnancy outcomes are criminalized, it is often because they were reported by a healthcare worker. She had been admitted to the Catholic hospital twice and left without getting any treatment. Then a nurse called 911 on her. They called 911 because Watts returned no longer pregnant. The nurse reported saying the baby's in her backyard in a bucket and that she didn't want to have a child. Watts has repeatedly said that she didn't tell the nurse that this pregnancy was unwanted, just that it was unintended, but she had always wanted to give her mother a grandchild. This was a wanted unintended pregnancy. And what actually happened was Watts may have said that she didn't want to fish what she knew was a dead fetus from the bucket of blood, tissues, and feces that she'd scooped from her overflowing toilet. Because that is what happens. And so this nurse called 911 on her and the police went to her house and tore apart her bathroom. All because she returned to the hospital, no longer pregnant, when they knew she was miscarrying. Again, this is a very, very important case because for rights of people with the capacity for pregnancy, this is a huge precedent that this case is going to set. Her miscarriage was entirely ordinary. So I just want to know what the prosecutor thinks she should have done. Are we going to require people to collect and bring used menstrual products to hospitals so that they can make sure it isn't a miscarriage? This again is another reason why I think it is very important to, yeah, the people that go into healthcare matter and your beliefs and your biases matter when you are in healthcare because this is the outcome of healthcare workers' bias. As a nurse, you are why nurses get the shit that we get. Because so a black woman in Ohio had a miscarriage of a non-viable fetus and a nurse a nurse called the cops on her. You know, 
I, I'm, I'm about to go into a nursing exam right now. I've wanted to be a nurse for 20 years, and that's not the type of nurse I want to be. I, I'm disgusted by by that nurse's actions. I listened to that nurse's phone call. You know, that went to a grand jury, and the grand jury had more compassion than the nurse did. That phone call, the nurse literally threw her patient under the bus. We are supposed to be patient advocates. And <clears throat> to top it all off, I know that nurse likely would not have done that had the miscarriage happened to a white woman. I, I, in my nursing school right now, one of our professors, every semester, she gives an impassioned speech about how we as nurses, I love this professor, by the way, about how we as nurses have to change this, this, these disparities that disproportionately impact black American patients in the United States of America. They are very, very real. And this is just one more example of, unfortunately, systemic racism that permeates every aspect of our society. And I'm married to a black woman, so this terrifies me that a nurse would throw her compassion out the window and when she should have checked her emotions at the door, she brought in her biases and her emotions. I mean, these these are NCLEX questions. She failed the NCLEX in reality. This, these are not the actions of a nurse. They're not. I love people. I'm an incredibly passionate person. And Brittany Watts was going through one of the most difficult situations in her life, compounded by the fact that the state politicians have made it incredibly difficult for doctors and other medical personnel in the state to make decisions that were not so difficult when I was a kid. Those doctors and those nurses are afraid of going to jail. And some of those nurses have pro-life biases that they bring into the hospital with them. And it enrages me. It enrages me. Go listen to that nurse's phone call that they used as court evidence. She lied on the phone call about what Brittany Watts said. That shows you very clearly that it was an extreme bias that almost put a black woman in prison for life. I don't want to be that kind of nurse. I don't. We have to get more nurses to replace nurses like that. Because that's not... We, we cannot build trust in our communities with nurses that act like cops. We need to talk about Brittany Watts, who had a miscarriage at home and is now being charged with abuse of a corpse. She went to the hospital with abdominal pain and bleeding and found out that her pregnancy was not viable, meaning her baby would never survive outside the womb. In fact, while she was at the hospital, doctors were trying to induce her. They literally tried to give her a medical abortion at the hospital to ensure her safety. She decided to go home. Now, her choice to go home, it doesn't... This happened to me um, earlier this year. And um, I was nowhere near as far along as she was. But I had a miscarriage. It was my first ever miscarriage. Um, I had no idea how to handle it, what to do with the remains. I panicked. And it's making me emotional just talking about it because I can't imagine if it had been even more um, and even more developed, maybe even... A fetus that I was already developing an emotional attachment to, something that I was preparing for, potentially already had a nursery for. So she miscarried into the toilet, panicked, didn't know what to do, um, scooped what was in the toilet out um, and laid it out near the bathroom garbage can. What do you do? Um, I've, I've been in that exact situation. I, I did that exact thing. And I can't even tell you how fucked up it is that because I live in California and she's in, in Ohio, that that's the only difference. Brittany tried to keep going about her life because what do you do after that? Like, what are you supposed to do? She'd already been to the hospital three times. They had tried to get her to induce a abortion at the hospital because they were afraid for her life. And she thinks, okay, the situation's handled.
She goes back to the hospital and a nurse asks her about the situation and what she did with the remains of her miscarriage. Someone on that unit knows, like as a nurse, you are why nurses get the shit that we get. Because the fact that you went to the cops, hold on, I'm gonna find out what hospital it was. Mercy Health St. Joseph's. Mercy Health St. Joseph in Ohio. Someone in their ER, one of their ER nurses, called 911 to get the cops to come and arrest this black woman for having a miscarriage. The cops then go to her home, disassemble her fucking toilet, looking for signs to see if she induced this, if she harmed the baby, if she ended the pregnancy of a fetus that was no longer living. I want an I'm out for blood. I'm sorry. If you are calling the cops on your patients in situations like this, Get the fuck out of healthcare. Get, you are the worst of us. The scum of the scum. I am so fucking mad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, Brittany Watts has a GoFundMe. It's, it's raised over $100,000. She needs us to show up for her like everyone was showing up for that white lady in Texas. Who was pro-life, by the way? Anyway, show the fuck up for black women the same way you do for white women. This is her GoFundMe. It's the first thing that shows up when you search... Brittany Watts, GoFundMe. Support her, show up for her, and do not forget that women of color are disproportionately affected by these medieval fucking abortion bans, and no one should be forced to give birth. Find me that fucking nurse. Remember Brittany Watts in Ohio, the woman who was dragged into court after having a miscarriage at home? Well, the prosecutor who brought charges against her, criminal charges, Dennis Watkins out of Trumbull County, is running for re-election, unopposed. In fact, he's run unopposed since 1984. He will never have to explain his actions to voters. That is the state of democracy today. Watts, the woman in Ohio who was charged with abuse of a corpse after she had a miscarriage at home, went on CBS and I think she's answered quite a few questions that people have had on the videos I've posted about her. One of the questions people had asked was why did she leave the hospital? She had been there on the 19th and the 20th and both times had gone home without really receiving significant care. That's how she ended up having the miscarriage at home. So what she says in the video in the interview is that Basically, she was waiting for long periods of time, and what it sounds like to me is that there wasn't good communication to her about what was being done, and she was tired and she was scared, so she went home. The second time she went in, which was on the 20th, her case was referred to the Ethics Committee, and it took them apparently about six hours to decide that it was okay for her to receive the health care that she needed. She was in the hospital for about 11 hours. Nobody told her they had referred her case to ethics, and she didn't know what was going on, and she was worried that nothing was happening, so she left. Then she came back after the miscarriage because she was bleeding and that's when the nurse who was taking care of her called the police. So this is another thing people had a lot of questions around. Why was the nurse calling the police in the first place? Because that's what led to Ms. Watts being charged. Here's what we learned in this new interview. For the third time, Watts returned to the hospital. The nurse comes in and she's rubbing my back and uh, talking to me and saying everything's gonna be okay. Little do I know, the nurse that was comforting me and saying that everything was going to be okay was the one who called the police. I had a mother who um, had a delivery at home and came in without the baby. Do I need to have someone go find this baby or direct me what I need to do? Did she say if the baby was alive or not? She said she didn't want to look, she didn't want the baby, and she didn't look. The nurse said that you said you didn't want to look and that you did not want the baby. Do you remember saying that? I said I did not want to look. I have never said I, I didn't want my baby. I would have never said something like that. It just makes me angry that somebody would put those type of words in my mouth to make me seem so callous and so, so hateful. They go on to say the nurse was instructed by risk management to call the police, but certainly no one told her to lie about Ms. Watts' desire for her pregnancy.
the last part of the interview I really want you to hear is when they ask Ms. Watts why she wants to talk about this publicly. Why talk about this now publicly? Because I don't want any other woman to go through what I had to go through. How would you describe the Brittany Watts today? Motivated, because now that the charges have been dropped, I'm ready to get to work, making sure that the laws are changed and people are educated on what to do for something that happens all the time. And, you know, as the old saying goes, history repeats itself. I don't want it to happen in this case. After everything she's been through, she shouldn't have to be a hero. But there are so many people who will benefit from her willingness to tell her story. We all owe her a debt of gratitude. Do I have any thoughts on the nurse who reported Brittany Watts? Oh yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, that nurse should be ashamed of themselves. What happened to above all do no harm? You did harm, you did a lot of harm. Please just give up your license now. Honestly, you should not be practicing. That is vile. I, I don't care what the laws are in your state. I, I don't care. You have an obligation to the patient, the patient who didn't do anything wrong, who was coming to you from... It's vile, it's disgusting. There is no excuse. Uh, I, I, I don't care what any pressure you're under. I, I don't care. There is a greater good. There is right and there is wrong and you are wrong and this is despicable as a nurse. Unfortunately, if you're a woman in America and you have a miscarriage and you call law enforcement uh, for help because the fetus is stuck, Invoke your right to remain silent and contact a criminal defense attorney. Doesn't matter if you live in a red state or a blue state, as what is happening in America right now is so unclear. The only thing that's clear is that having a miscarriage can result in felony charges. The evidence is clear that she never sought any sort of health care for an abortion. She only sought prenatal care. Um, Here's some statistics on infant mortality for black and brown people in America. They are deplorable. But even infant mortality rates in America are generally bad, but for black women, they're worse. So when she sought postnatal care because she had she was having a life-threatening hemorrhaging, um, police were called. A forensic pathologist has been retained to say very clearly that this fetus was not alive, it was non-viable, um, because her mem membranes had ruptured early and the baby was so preterm. This is the position of the assistant prosecutor. It isn't how the child died. When the child died, it's the fact that the baby was put into a toilet large enough to clog up the toilet, left in the toilet, and she went on with her day. As a criminal defense attorney, I cannot even advise against this kind of misogynistic thinking. As an attorney, I have to advise people on how to avoid criminal behavior, but nothing that this woman did is criminal. It's being criminalized, obviously. Um, so some in points is obviously invoke your right to remain silent, ask to miscarry under medical supervision in a hospital setting so that you don't find yourself in this position. Um, and if you are in this position, make sure that you retain an attorney immediately because that's how this battle will be won against these prosecutions. Many GoFundMes have been set up. Comment with questions. Brittany, I want you to know about the amount of people that are raising awareness about how poorly you were treated. The Ohio Board of Nursing right now has a 1.7 star rating. The hospital has been flooded with one star reviews of people advocating on your behalf. This is an American tragedy. This should have never happened to you. And I'm very sorry that it did. There are healthcare professionals that want nothing more than that nurse to be held accountable. Okay. Justice for Brittany. And I'm truly honored and grateful that you all have come to support me. And we are not done fighting.